these are the grandmas. I'm here with Nanna, lead singer and guitarist of multi award winning and platinum selling band of Monsters and Men. Her debut solo album, How to Start a Garden, is out May 5th. And she kindly invited us to her rehearsal studio or rehearsal space to uh, talk a bit about the album with us and, and show us the process behind it. Nana, before we start the interview f properly, uh, can you tell me a bit what happens within these walls? Yeah, um, so right here where we are right now, we are in the control room. So this is where we spend, where I spend most of my days these days. Uh, whether I'm recording with my band of Monsters and Men, or yeah, when I was recording this album that I'm about to release. Um, and then we also rehearse here, there's like a little live room, and then we drink a lot of coffee in the kitchen. Nice, <laughs> like you do when you're rehearsing a lot, I, I imagine. Yeah, basically, it's like fresh pots yeah. all the time. <laughs> uh, your debut solo album, How to Start a Garden, is out uh, May 5th. Tell me, do you feel any differently towards it uh, than if you would be just releasing another Of Monsters and Men album? Yeah, it feels, it does feel pretty different. Um, you know, I've yet to kind of pinpoint what it is, but I mean, the whole process of like making an album by yourself is. It's it's very different because I'm so used to working in this group. Yeah. And when you release something, it's like five people, and we all are very excited together. And um, and I have people now that I've been working on this record with, and it's all very exciting and fun. But the, yeah, it's definitely a different feeling. I can understand that. Yeah. And and in a way, like you know, um, I mean, this is a very personal project yeah. you know so in a way it's like it's um yeah I'm, I'm, it, it's a different kind of excitement mm. i guess yeah uh where does this album come from what sort of encouraged you to to make this album um i you know i had kind of had this i kind of had this thing in the back of my head for a long time mm. And, you know, kind of knew, I kind of knew that, that, that I was going to release uh, an album on my own at some point. But um, especially because the way that I started was I had like a little project. Yeah, exactly. Um, a solo project. And then when I met the guys and we started the band mm -hmm. that, you know, just very quickly took over. Um, and I've been so focused on the band for for many years now, but yeah, this has definitely been something that's in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And and then I guess it's the classic thing of COVID in a way where suddenly you had time to kind of you know just focus in mm -hmm. and yeah, you had time for for the projects that you wanted to. Dive into. Exactly. And it's this uh, introspection that, that we previously talked about uh, yeah. in an earlier conversation. Uh, we, were we were talking about the sort of the, the you know, the differences uh, between, uh, you know, you talked about the, the attraction of opposites and, for example, mm -hmm. how you are more sort of extroverted uh, with the band, with of the men, but but sort of, you know, more introverted when it comes to, or, or you know, sl turning slightly inwards when mm -hmm. it comes to this album. Um, can you tell me how this um, fascination of the opposites kind of mm. uh, features and, and presents itself on the album? Yeah, um, you know, I think this attraction to to these opposites has always, it's always been a part of me and always been a part of the way that I like to write and um, like we do it a lot in the band actually like mm. we have you know songs that on on the outside feel very like big and 
you know, like joyful, mm -hmm. and then we're like super depressed <laughs> in the lyrics. Sure. <laughs> but um, but I do like that. I think it kind of brings a certain kind of you know, like I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, just a, a little bit of a, um, a layer to mm -hmm. it, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, when when I'm with the band and we're touring and we're you know playing festivals, it's it's very outwards, mm -hmm. and you know you kind of you have to you're trying to bring people in, and you're kind of you're performing for the masses, you mm -hmm. know. And but I'm also. I love the quiet moments yeah. and the, the music that I often gravitate towards is like very quiet mm. and um, and just introspective and, and stuff like that. So um, that's always been a part of me. Yeah. And on this album, I just kind of dove into yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You know? So would you, would, you, would you consider yourself an introvert as opposed to an extrovert? Yeah, probably. Um, I'm like, I'm very comfortable in my own, you know, yeah. companion. <laughs> I say, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say that. And then I have bursts of like, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess we all do uh, yeah. to some extent. Uh, but that's, of course, one of the kind of, uh, at least what I took from it, one of the main themes of the album that is, that is kind of solitude or or being solitary, uh, yet somehow sharing that solitude with mm. others through music and art. That's, mm. that's kind of my take from yeah. the album after listening to it. Um, now, one of the things we're going to do uh, in just a second is we're going to take a deeper dive into some of the songs on the album, mm. um, which I'm very excited for, and, um, and you know, look at them a bit more closely. Yeah. Uh, before we do that, I want to ask you, uh, do you have a, a favorite track to play live? Or you know, rehearse with a band. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like we're we're rehearsing, we've been re rehearsing so much, mm. and you know, it's it's fun because like um, yeah, we're being kind of playful with the songs, yeah. and I I really love playing Disaster Master with mm -hmm. them. I love playing Voyager. Um, we were just like going into, we were just practicing now, and we were. Uh, playing sea bets, yeah. and that was really fun. And a lot of the, what these songs have in common is maybe like there's a certain kind of, you know, floatiness. Like, and we mm. just kind of keep playing. Like, it's hard to stop. You know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like I like playing those. Yeah. Are you a songwriter? Songwriter that kind of, you know, you can pick up an instrument and and just write something, or do you prefer having sort of the conceptual? ideas in your mind or laid out in front of you mm. before you start? No, I would say I do it much more. Um, you know, I, 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 the guitar is my main way of writing yeah. and usually it's just I pick up the guitar and you know, I just play and st until something feels nice. I don't mm -hmm. really go in with a concept. Okay. Um, often I'll just also I'll write the lyrics and I don't really know what I'm talking about mm. until like, you know, weeks later, I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more like intuition. Yeah. Um, but I also really love uh, when you pick up an instrument that you don't know how to play. Mm. That's one of my favorite things when it's just, you know, you're just very curious about what this piece of instrument sounds yeah. like. Yeah. And then you know, what kind of a rhythm it creates yeah, exactly, or yeah. soundscape. And then I think that's the thing. Like curiosity yeah. is such an important thing. Absolutely. Do you have an example of a, an instrument you kind of didn't know how to play and, and uh, featured on the album or? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think for most things, I'm just like, yeah. you know, I'm not, no expert. <laughs> 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 I, I approach it from a very like playful place. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I did a lot of on this record. I would just like sample my voice or mm. like use the OP1. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. that's I love the OP1. Nice. And that's um, one of the things that I would, you know, just play around with. And it's kind of like impossible too. OK, how does that work? Because, yeah, um, I mean, or like, let like, me turn what? it on. Yeah, 
<laughs> well, let me show you. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it has a, you know, a few different, it has like the um, drum machine, you know, and, yeah. and, oh, I'm not on that. You know, wow. all these fun things. And then you can kind of go in, you have the monkey and, you know, you can create the pattern. There's a monkey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> awesome. You know, and you can make your own sounds and stuff. And what I would do for this record yeah. is that I would like basically just sing into this thing mm. and it would sound super shitty. Yeah. Um, but that was a part of the charm, I thought. And then and you just play it. And I like the way that, you know, because it has a cutoff, mm. so it does yeah, this thing, yeah, you know, yeah. which is really nice. Um, and yeah, you just create like all of these things to kind of, you know, I use this a lot for, um, for texture underneath and then you mm. kind of build on top of it. So it just sounds very like, you know, warm mm. and, and nice. Um, yeah. Did you sort of use this as a foundation when you started writing or you kind of come from that, of course, that songwriter background. So, you know, I, I'd imagine, you know, you, you start with a guitar and then you kind of mm -hmm. add layers on top or did you kind of approach the, uh, the uh, process of, of songwriting from a different perspective this time around? Or like, did you experiment with, with working, um, you know, starting off with an OP1, for example, or? Yeah, kind of both. Yeah. You know, where um, for some of these songs, like Godzilla, because mm -hmm. it's such a, it's just, it's driven by that guitar. Mm -hmm. And so I played it for such a long time and I kind of let the lyrics develop over time. Yeah. And I found that that's the way that I prefer, like right now, that's how, um, what I prefer. Mm -hmm. But that hasn't always been the case. And sure. when I started working on this record, I, I preferred to like, you know, like do more of this and just like layer and, you know, just see what fit. And there's a song on the record called Sputnik. Mm -hmm. And that's very much like built around sounds and just piecing together things to make like a little rhythmic thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was definitely, the, it was just kind of like whatever works in the moment. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Godzilla. Mm -hmm. uh, came out on January 13th, the first single of your debut uh, album. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit where the song comes from? Yeah. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, it's, it's a song that you know, I started with the with the pick, mm. the, the the rhythmic kind of thing. Yeah. I can. Should I play it for yeah, you? Yeah, please, please. <laughs> I mean, the thing that I really liked doing on this record was just like try to find alternative tunings. Okay. Because I got really bored with the standard, yeah. you know, tuning, and it's just like I I couldn't really think of anything anymore. Um, so. That's the same thing of like trying to take you out of what you know. Mm. And um, when you have a tuning that's, that's different, then you don't really know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then you start doing different things, which I, you know, helped me a lot. So it just started like this. And this is just something that I would play like in the evenings and and just sounded kind of like sad but also pretty, you know, like melancholic yeah. which is a feeling that I <laughs> gravitate towards. Yeah. <laughs> sort of an overarching feeling of the of the album maybe. Yeah. 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 No, it's interesting because you know the song kind of you you explore the theme of of that kind of prescriptive evil, somebody always having mm -hmm. to play the villain. Uh, but yet, you know, it's it's sort of sonically, it's sort of um, 
you know, mellow and, and, and kind of stripped down. So it's mm -hmm. interesting to hear how you kind of went about that. Yeah, yeah, it's like... Yeah, I don't know, it's just like a song... Um... Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I was kind of... Um... I mean, the lyrics, these lyrics are some, like, they're, I, I, they're really close to my heart, mm -hmm. you know, or there's something that I, you know, I think one of my favorite lyrics on the record is from that song, yeah. and I think it does describe for me this feeling of, it's like, it is that solitude, and it is that thing of, like, having a moment with yourself, mm -hmm. and... And it is about the roles that we play in our own narrative or in other people's narratives. Mm -hmm. And it's also, it's just like a song about, I guess, things aren't always so um, black and white, you know? Like there's the gray, there's the middle thing, there's complicated, people are complicated. And I think that's the thing with Godzilla, like people are complicated. And that story to me is complicated. Mm. It's like, it, it's kind of whatever way you look at the story of Godzilla, mm -hmm. you know, you can, um, yeah, you can see it from many different angles. Yeah, exactly. So do you think Godzilla was just a poor, misunderstood creature? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was evil. <laughs> no, but I, I, I get what you're saying. There's, there's, there's multiple, multiple perspectives of, of every story and narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, this whole... You know, I also know, like, you know, Godzilla is also like this uh, re reaction of like the nuclear, you know, yeah. like, it's a, so it is like, that's pretty bad, yeah, you know, sure. <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> but if you just look at the, you know, um, also how we as humans, if I'm going to go very deep here, like mm. how we, you know, we're, we, we're so quick to be like, we are, we are the hero, mm -hmm. you know, and then there are these other, just nature. And we're so quick to um, not understand that we're part of nature, I guess. Yeah. You know, we're part of the whole whole spectrum. Exactly, yeah. Uh, tell me... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was the reason for, for choosing that uh, as, as the first single of your album, you know? Mm. Kind of the first thing everybody sees uh, or hears uh, uh, from your new uh, material. Mm. Was there a special reason behind that? Or? Yeah, I, I was, I really wanted it to be that one, mm. um, and it's not the obvious choice, I think. Okay. Um, but I felt like it represented. I don't know. I like a quiet entrance, mm -hmm. and um, I thought it represented a lot of the, the album and the themes of the album, and. Um, and yeah, I just I, I thought it was a nice entry to the, the rest of the album. Mm -hmm. And then uh, along comes your second single, Cry yeah. Baby, on February 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, can you sort of uh, indulge me with the, you know, where that song comes from as well? Mm -hmm. um, so that song was. Um, I wrote it here in Iceland. I wrote it um, like a lot of the songs. I, I worked on them like in the country sites, um, in a cabin there. And that was one of the songs that I was working on while I was there. And it was one of the first songs on the record, mm. really. Um, and but I wrote it and I just kind of put it aside for a very long time. I felt like um, there would be a time where it would make sense. Mm -hmm. And and it did at some point because then when I was working on the record and I you know, needed a different perspective, I needed to just leave Iceland for a bit mm -hmm. and, and do something else. Um, I went up to Long Pond and met up with Aaron Dessner. Mm -hmm. um, who co-produced the track with me and that was really fun because he we just clicked on that song it was mm. nice to kind of bring it you know take it out of the shelf and yeah, yeah. here <laughs> what exactly. should we do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 
he he brought so many cool things to that track. Yeah, exactly. The uh, the cover of the single. Mm -hmm. How she's posting a very kind of royal red dress. Yeah. Uh, I heard a rumor yeah. uh, that you broke into the Thinkwetli National Park for that photo shoot. Is that is that true? <laughs> well, it was sniper's nest. Oh, a sniper's yes. nest. Okay, okay. So <laughs> close enough. Okay. Well, I need to get my sources straight. I, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's. It sounds kind of cool that we broke in. But I, I like that story better. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> yeah, but of course your your cooperation with with uh, Aaron Dustin from the National and and, and Josh Kaufman. Yeah. Uh, did have a, a big impact. You, you yes, told me. Definitely. Um, so uh, and we'll talk maybe a bit more about that in, in, a, in a second. But mm -hmm. like I also just wanted to um, maybe go ahead um, over to the title track of the song, mm -hmm. How to Start the Garden. Uh, when we spoke, you, you talked about how it's kind of, you know, it's the title track, it's it's opening the album, it, it yeah. kind of opens up and you described it to me uh, and I instantly got the picture in my head, you know, you're walking into a garden and, and, and suddenly it, it kind of drops mm -hmm. and you are transported to this kind of winter setting in a remote cabin. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I was interested in hearing how you kind of went about expressing that musically. Um, mm. Is there anything you can kind of tell us or, or, or even show us how you went about that? Yeah, um, <clears throat> definitely. Um, yeah, when I was when I was writing that song, um, you know, it started out with the guitar mm. um, and. I was... How is it? Let's go. Yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. Something different. Mm. But that was just like... I wrote it in the middle of winter and it was very shitty outside and I was looking out and I, I lived in a new house and my neighbor is um, he, he's great in with the garden mm. he really spends a lot of time so that was like a concept that was there of like how to start a garden and I wanted the track to kind of like you were saying open up into this feeling of hope yeah. And that's how the, the album starts. And, and so, like, during the process of making this record, I was kind of all over the place. Um, and a lot of the sounds from that that song are, you know, like from Flat Daddy, actually. Oh, okay. Because I, I spent some time there um, just with my friends. And I was working on the songs. and. I would record like the birds outside yeah, yeah. and I would record them talking, which I think I can like show you guys some of that. Um, let me see if the computer complies. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just, you have this sound of rain and birds. And just me walking around. So this is just me with my Zoom, you know, yeah, thing. Yeah. And then we're laughing. We're having a good time. Um. <laughs> yeah, my friend wants to go to the beach. Mm. <laughs> I, so yeah. I, yeah, I love this idea of using the environment and and the sounds in the environment to kind of make up a foundation. Is that a bee? No, it's or not a, fly? a bee. It's oh. like um, I sampled. Um, <laughs> oh. I, I, it's, it's Raki. Actually. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I sampled him, um, and and just messed around with it. And I think there's more. There's uh, where are you? Come here. Here you are. <laughs> What's that? Is that Raki? It's Raki too, oh. yeah. That's just, I don't know, like this track to me is, um, 
I get such a warm feeling because mm. there is this thing of like hope in it and like in the very beginning when I'm just I'm, I'm like putting my friends in there and mm. I would do this like I don't know if they're happy about it but I would like secretly record them all the time <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and just put them in there because I like I don't know I liked having them mm. be a part of it mm -hmm. and it was very important for me like even if I though I was doing this thing solo um, I wanted to create a sense of community, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and even maybe I that was more important than ever to me because there was a point of making it where it did feel lonely, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then you're like, I, I want my friends around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do they know uh, you recorded them? I, I did tell them. Okay. <laughs> That's probably uh, I was like, best. it's low in the mix. <laughs> Nobody's gonna know. <laughs> Uh, you told me even your dog made an appearance in one track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and yeah, I, I just love how you how you use those environmental sounds to to make that foundation. Um, it it really brings it brings home the feeling of of you know that you know it's it's very solemn. It's it's very kind of sincere. I want to say. Mm, um, so uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, and one thing I also want to talk about is the diversity of the recording studios and recording environments you uh, produced the album in. I mean, you went up to upstate New York uh, to work with uh, Aaron Dessner and, and Josh Kaufman uh, from The National, um, both, of course, tremendously um, talented producers and, and uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also recorded the, uh, some of the songs and, and some of the music here in Iceland and in your cabin and even in Flatir, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think those, you know, use, utilizing those different recording environments, what do you think that, how, how do you think that affects the overall soundscape and, and sound of the album? Mm. I, I, I think it does have a huge impact on the way that this album sounds and it wasn't necessarily like my intention mm. um, when I was starting but but also at the same time I'm such a believer that you can you know you you can make music anywhere and from with anything um, and I think a lot of times when people are maybe afraid of, of you know mm doing something and it's the thing is like I don't have the right equipment or I don't have the studio I don't have this and that and um, you know I, I don't think that that needs to be the case mm. um, and yeah I just wanted to kind of do whatever felt right at the moment and sometimes it was recording in the cabin or um, Sometimes it was like I need to leave Iceland for a bit and I go to a new place. So it was just very much out of instinct mm -hmm. each time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Now, there's one track on the album where you sing in Icelandic. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because, you know, and I, I, couldn't, I didn't believe it when you told me that you haven't, haven't, su you know, you haven't <laughs> sung in Icelandic, at least not released a, a song in Icelandic. In, mm -hmm you know, the majority of your musical career. Um, what kind of drove you into doing that or implementing the Icelandic portion of it? Um, you know, I... We've thought, like, in, in uh, Monsters, like, we've, we've thought about it a lot. Mm. So, like, you know, we want to do it, but it's never been natural for us. It just always felt kind of forced. Um, and... For this track, it just it honestly just happened because okay. it was this, you know, I wanted the ending to have kind of a similar effect to the beginning of uh, of the album, How to Start the Garden, and then the seabed is the last song, and so I, you know, just kind of wanted it to be this mantra that continues and then kind of starts, a, you know, a breaking apart. Mm -hmm. um, and... The mantra was it was just very it came very quickly and easily and and I think a part of it too was that I wanted it to feel like a little ghost story or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know how like here in Iceland we have 
you know, when when there's a ghost and he the ghost is like uh, says things three times yeah, or yeah. something, <laughs> and that to me felt very inspiring. So this thing of like repeating yourself mm. all the time. Um, yeah, there was there was some kind of a connection there. Yeah, that's a it's a beautiful idea. Mm. And did you record that on your own, or did you? Uh, I believe there are some some other voices to be heard there. Is that is that you know multiple voices, or is it just you and multi track? No, it's me and then Bjarni, who yeah. was um, uh, I was was recording with me, uh, engineering. Um, he he sing there, and Raki is yeah. singing there. Yeah. So I I got these guys to kind of nice. join me. Yeah. Uh, now one of those uh, the last things I want to ask you is is you know of course it the album kind of covers a wide spectrum of you know both ideas and feelings and sounds. Do you have a favorite sound or a favorite piece of equipment you used during the, during the recording process? Oh. <laughs> Like the OP1, I yeah. think that's f uh, fascinating. Uh, OP1, I, definitely. I, I've seen it a number of times, but I've never actually used one or, or yeah. e even you know seen one using it. So it's so fun. Like that's probably like, I mean, this is my go-to yeah. thing, and just for also, you know, just the atmosphere and and um, creating textures and stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to find like, oh, what are you doing there? <laughs> But it's also like it's so complicated. Okay. It doesn't look like it should be complicated. No, it kind of looks like a, a toy. To it be looks like a toy. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to find. I think I might have deleted it. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna show you guys because um, for for. Um, Disaster Master, for yeah. example, because that song is recording, recorded in Dreamland, mm -hmm. so it's a church, and the whole, you know, the thing was to uh, use that church, and so all of the the in instrumentation is very organic, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of, you know, these kind of sounds, but there's this one sound uh, where I pitch my voice, mm -hmm. and I'm doing like this melody thing, and... Um, and I had to sing it because, you know, to time it right, I had yeah. to sing it very slowly, okay. you know. <laughs> and then when you play it, it like went right on the beat. Sure. But I think I deleted it. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like... That's too bad. Yeah, because I'm not very organized. So I deleted that, yeah. um, which is not great, but that's okay. I'm, I'll, I hope you can recover it somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, you know, you're going on your first solo tour yeah. uh, in July. What are your thoughts and feelings on that? I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, we're going to be touring America. We're going to um, yeah, tour America. And then we're coming back for Ice and Dare Waves. Nice. So... Yeah, I'm just excited. It's been a while yeah. since I've been tour yeah, been touring. Yeah. So um, I kinda can't wait. Fantastic. Uh is there an album lined up inside your head? Do you have any new tracks that you're writing? Right now? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Okay. I mean yes. I yeah. Anything you wanna preview? <laughs> No, I think I'll wait. Sure. Okay. <laughs> no, but I did find like um, as soon as this album was ready, because I enjoyed making this record yeah. so much. It was such a fun, you know, process. And when when I sent it off to be mixed, I just w really wanted to make another record. Yeah. And and I think this is actually a really good time because you have there's no pressure to do it. Yeah. And then. I think that's when you make the the best. Uh, for me, at least, it's just you know pressure is never. It's not your friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get that. Well, Nana, congratulations on your album. Thank, Thank you so you. much for inviting us to this lovely studio and uh, you know showing us a, a few insights into your your album process and your and your song process. 
Uh, it's a fantastic album. Uh, How to Start a Garden is out May 5th. Uh, thank you so much, Nana. Thank you. And uh, good luck on all your ventures. Thank you so much. But yeah, this was us just like using the room and then... Mm. Uh, Um, this is just like the stems and that. Sure, yeah. But what we did is that we just kind of turned everything down because we wanted the the brass to take over and for it to just kind of like become this kind of little ghost world.